Why don't we talk about some Emmy predictions now to wrap up? Uh, where do you want to start with these, Dave? You want to start small to big? Sure. That sounds fitting. All right. Do you want to do the actors? Do you want to do the uh, any of the writing categories? Anything you want to highlight? Yeah, start with the actors. You know, we, we talked about the nominations when they came out back in July, July 16. So check that video out. We kind of talk more about the actors and shows that were snubbed before and uh, anything that surprised us about the overall crop. So not we don't want to rehash that. So just check that video out if you're curious about more top level stuff. This time, let's kind of think who will win, who should win for the Emmys coming this Sunday. But yeah, let's start with the actors. Yeah, and why don't we work our way through each category? So we'll start with um, limited series, uh, just to kind of touch on those. So supporting actor in a limited series, um, pretty, I mean, a pretty good category. Uh, you know, there there's six people nominated. Probably the highlights. We don't need to go through everybody. You can check that out on your own. Uh, I definitely have Stellan Skarsgård and Michael K. Williams up there, j- just for the names in general. But uh, Skarsgård on Chernobyl, I think, is awesome. Um, and Michael K. Williams, I haven't seen When They See Us, but pretty much everything he's in, he kills it. And I could see him getting some love here, especially because I don't have When They See Us winning in a lot of other categories. So I think this could be a place where uh, they, they get one for that the Netflix series. Who do you got? It's funny, I've seen a lot of love on all the predictor sites for Ben Whishaw for a very English scandal on mm. Prime. Show I haven't seen. Ben Whishaw is oh. good. Um, so I'll throw it out there. Yeah, Stone Skarsgård, uh, Paul Dano from Escape of Danamora. You know, those yeah. are movie actors on TV. More understated roles, though. So I wonder where they lean here. I don't know, this is kind of one that I kind of have a hard time... Uh, Picking one because again, George Clooney was not picked for Catch Twenty Two, who I expected to be here. So, uh, this is one I think it's hard to get a read on. But I'll just def- defer to the predictors and go with Ben Whishaw. But I think Skarsgård would be my choice because he's the only one of these I've actually seen. Yeah, Skarsgård was really, really good in Chernobyl, as were, were most of the performances. Uh, supporting actress on limited series for me. Um, I'm looking at Patricia Clarkson from Sharp Objects. Uh, I think she, I think she takes this home pretty easily, in my opinion. Um, I, Margaret Qualley for Fosse Verdon. Uh, I'll, I couldn't really see her winning this. Uh, any other stand out to you? No, I think it's Clarkson. I mean, Patricia Arquette will come up again. Uh, she could, I guess, win twice for the act. But yeah, I think this is pretty clearly Felicia Clarkson for Sharp Objects to me. Perhaps the only win for Sharp Objects from last year. Yeah, I think it's a pretty easy call. All right, why don't we move into the lead actors then? Lead actor in a limited series or movie. Who do you got? Uh, this is an interesting one as well. Uh, I think it's going to be the guy from When They See Us, Jarrell Jerome. He plays. I can see that. He plays his character as both a young person and an adult. The only one in the cast to do that. Um, I think when they see us, Netflix is putting basically everything into that show um, for it. So he would be my choice. I think his only real competition for this is probably Mahershala for True mm-hmm. Detective. Um, Sam Rockwell. I don't know if they want to give an award out for playing a problematic man, Bob yeah. Fosse. So I don't know if the optics are good for that. <laughs> Uh, Jerry Harris, category. Chernobyl, good, but, you know, understated performance. So, stacked one for sure. sure. Uh, but, yeah, I'll go with Jerome. Yeah, uh, I, I have Jared Harris up there, too, just because I have, I have a feeling Chernobyl is either going to hit big or uh, go down without anything uh, coming its way. But it really just captured the conversation, as did When They See Us, which we haven't seen. So, uh, I could definitely see Jarell Jerome. Mahershal, he's just beloved by all these uh, yeah. award. I mean, just beloved in general, but especially by the award academy. So, uh, I really, I, I don't think you can count him out. He actually probably would be my pick. Um, what about lead actress in limited series? Who do you got at the top? So Patricia Arquette for Escape of Danamora. She already won the Globe, the SAG Award, and the Critics Choice Award for this role because you know obviously it's been a while since the show came out, right at the beginning of the eligibility period. 
And she's like beat Amy Adams and sharp objects already in setting these categories, but she hasn't gone head to head with Michelle Williams from Fosse. Yeah. So I think it's truly a two horse race for them. And I would not be surprised. Michelle Williams sneaks in there. Mm-hmm. What I just said about Bob Fosse, the opposite thinking stands for Gwen Verdon, someone who was not as appreciated as she deserved to be yeah. in her time, right? Um, and again, Arquette is a bit of old news for Steve mm-hmm. Anamora, given the way the, the calendar worked. But it's between those two. He, you can just hear Michelle Williams giving the speech now, right? You know, that this is for this is where Gwen Verdon never really got her shine when she was alive. You know, you can just hear it. So I, I could see that happening. I'd love to see Amy Adams win this. Um, but I, I mean, someone that is definitely pulled up by different award academies. Um, but I don't think it's going to uh, happen going with Michelle Williams. And finally, who do you got for the limited series? Uh, a category where I think we've seen like half of them, I believe. Yep. Uh, f- four of, no, we won't. yeah, uh, three of five. Three of five. Uh, I think it's when they see us. It's that or Chernobyl are the only two mm-hmm. that have a shot. But it feels like Netflix like this is the this will be their first win in a series for a series award for them, and they didn't really they win, want it. And didn't they win comedy last year? What's that? They, didn't they win comedy last year with uh, the one with Michael Douglas? Uh. Mm-hmm. Didn't that win comedy? Series? No, not the major, not the major award. Oh, gotcha. Um, that maybe uh, the, the 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 Comiskey method. I'm pretty sure won last year. Oh, did it? Shit. Well, let me just double. Let me just double back on that. Well, and talking. HBO, they're, they're they're focused on Thrones, right? With 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 their main their main show. So Chernobyl, I think Chernobyl again, as you said, really captured a moment. It's gonna be it was a kind of a surprise hit. It's shocking how big it actually got yet. When they see us, I think really also kind of speaks to the time in a way unlike anything else in this category and like most things most things nominated. So I think that's that, that, that's what I'm gonna go with. Yeah, actually I think um I think it was an acting category that one. I think right. Michael Douglas won for best lead actor. So that was my bad on that. Um but yeah, I, I could see it being um, when they see us, it, like like you said, it's between that and Chernobyl. Um, obviously, because I've seen it, I'd like Chernobyl to win. But uh, when they see us, probably going to pull it out. Now we move on to comedy next. And then we'll we'll wrap up with the drama, starting back down at the bottom again. Uh, supporting actor in a comedy series. Man, there is really only one person I, I want to win this category. Um, and But I think... Anthony Garrigan? <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. Um, but I, I think if they win, it's going to say a lot about how the night's going to go for the following uh, comedy categories. And that's, I want Tony Hale to pull it out for me. Um, He's won he, twice before? Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, twice. Uh, playing Gary. And uh, he is just fantastic. You know, this is a category where uh, Tony Shalhoub has won in the past. Um, uh, Really stacked just top to bottom. Henry Winkler, Stephen Rue, Alan Arkin. A lot of people in this are Winkler won last year. I'm I'm really hoping that Tony Hale pulls it out. But I think if he does, it's going to signal a big night for Veep potentially, which makes me Mm -hmm. a little bit concerned for some of my other favorites moving forward that we'll be talking about. Where are you at with this category, though? And I think it's going to be Winkler again. Uh, that means like the reward repeats. Yeah, and again, Tony Hale is also a repeat. So interesting idea. Maybe they move on from Barry after this year. Uh, Barry season two is better than season one, so I don't know uh, where the calculus is there. But yeah, I think it's a uh, Hale or Winkler with. Shaloub kind of on the outside, given that he has won this recently, but um, ultimately kind of tough to call. Yeah, it, it, it's a tough category for sure. Uh, supporting actress, also uh, a pretty tough category for a comedy series. Um, shout out to Betty Gilpin getting that nomination for Glow. <laughs> I don't right. see her Season two. pulling this out. Um, I, I have Alex Borstein, who... Uh, for Maisel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's been she, a bit of a awards juggernaut. Yeah, 
and yeah. I, I see it continuing. I, I believe she won last year as well, right? She did, yeah. yeah. Um, I think a lot of people would really pull for Anna Chlumsky and Veep, who's been nominated before but has never won. Um, Olivia Coleman has got a lot of love recently, but she is great on Fleabag. But yeah, I think it's Borstein, probably yeah. pretty easily. Pretty easily, in my opinion. Uh, who do you got for lead actor in a comedy series? This uh, is the category right here. Bill Hader. Yeah. Pretty easy. He won last year. And I guess Ted Danson is on the outside looking in with Good Place. But yeah, I think it's Hader. HBO. Yeah. I think so, too. Um, Ted Danson is uh, has the second best odds to win in this category. But I think Hader walks with this pretty easily. What about lead actress, though? Uh, yeah. So is Julia Louis Dreyfus suddenly mm. going to go six for seven with her role as Selena Meyer? I don't think so. She's going to win. This is this is probably the toughest category that I've Oh, made. I agree. <laughs> I mean, uh, not, not seeing Dead to Me uh, and only seeing a couple episodes of, of Russian, of uh, Shit's Creek, Creek, sorry. Um, pretty much every everyone else I've seen, I think, is deserving of the award. I mean, Rachel Brosnahan won it last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, JLD, like you said, pretty much wins every year. She plays Selena and very deserving. Natasha Leone, incredible. And Phoebe Waller-Bridge, probably the the hottest uh, in terms of most success and, and just critical acclaim right now in the business. I think any of them could take it home. Right. I would love... I would love to see Phoebe Waller-Bridge get it because I, I would love to see Fle- Fleabag also get the best comedy. But yeah, so Leon and Waller-Bridge are both also nominated for writing mm-hmm. for their shows. So I think one of them will win in that category. I would love Leon to win. I think she's probably the best peer choice of this. And I mean, Julia has been nominated twenty-five times and has eleven wins. Right? He doesn't need this award yet. Yeah. I mean, we're just kind of wrapping up the the Hall of Fame, you know, plaque right now. So, yeah. and Veep is going off the air. So, the the hard thing is, and I think a lot of times the Emmys fall into this is they do give repeat winners, but they also do that. I think with the idea like, oh well, when this show ends, well, the other show will finally get its due or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and that you know, some shows fall victims to that. Like Mad Men never really got the critical acclaim it should have. John Hamm um, never won. Yeah, which is just bizarre. But they did Steve Carell for The Office. The thing is, Fleabag is such a cultural phenomenon this year, and pretty much yeah. everybody's saying uh, it's the best thing they've seen this year. You have to watch it. I, I saw a tweet from Ryan Reynolds saying it's so good he wishes he had never seen it. Yeah, actually. amazing. <laughs> um, which I, I find hysterical. Um, and I think because there's not going to be more Fleabag, I think that it yes. has a shot to actually dethrone VP. So right. I, I can see people on Bridge pulling this out. And, and that's what was so exciting about being nominated. It was like the Emmys got it right the second time and really, you know, gave the show some love. And I mean, how many did we get? Uh, three or four, if I remember right. But uh, writing the show and then mm-hmm. Bridge. Uh, anyway, because this the belief is that the show will never return, why does it need to go down as one of those shows that should have won? Why can't it just win? No yeah. one's going to think any differently about Veep or JLD. <laughs> yeah, depending on if they win these last these last set, you know. So, and for all the reasons we're mentioning, this is why I think it's going to pull out best comedy series. Um, it's. Yeah. It, I really, I mean, you have a really stacked category: uh, Barry, Fleabag. The Good Place. I mean, I love all these shows, except for Shit's Creek. I'm not big, as big of a fan of, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, I, I feel like it would be a, a travesty if a show that's garnering this much acclaim, this much love, so unique, uh, really propelling a new star into the comedy world, goes un, unawarded. So, uh, what we've talked about is pretty much everybody except for Russian Doll getting some love. Um, from the other categories, but I think Fleabag takes it home. What do you think? I don't know, man. On the one hand, Maisel won eight times for season one, including the best <laughs> uh, I feel like if Maisel did win, 
for season two, everyone would be like, that's not even a shot against the show, but everyone would be like, what the fuck? Like, it's, it's, it's Veeper Fleabag this yep. year, right? And again, just because Russian Doll doesn't have a chance. Russian Doll is amazing. And you're not even uh, mentioning Barry, which we love. Right. Right. And, <laughs> v, but Veep has a show. I mean, the Veep has won like 17 times. Yeah. And this is the final season. And HBO, as a voting block, usually sticks together. So I think Veep wins, but Fleabag should win, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I want Fleabag to get something. I don't think it'll be this. Um, I, I think it's just going to be the writing award, ultimately. But I feel like that'd be a damn. travesty. But it'll, it'll be really interesting to watch. All right, wrapping it up with the drama. With the drama. Uh, what are, what are your, what's your prediction for supporting actor in a drama series? Look at the screen if you're on YouTube.com plus Nostalgia Pod. <laughs> And Peter Dinklage will win his fourth Best Supporting Actor in the role of Tyrion Lannister. Normally, you would think when three people from the same show are all nominated in the same category, they will pick each other off and split votes. But the problem with that is, who, is, who else do you actually realistically see winning in this place? Jonathan Banks has never won before, mm-hmm. by tons of nominations. Giancarlo Esposito, same thing. And I don't think Nikolai Costa Waldo is going to get there. Certainly not Alfie Allen. So I think it's just Dinkle again. Yeah, I think Dinklage takes this one home as well. Uh, supporting actress also has four Game of Thrones nominations, including Gwendolyn Christie, who nominated herself. So shout out to her. She's fucking mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, <laughs> who do y'all win in this one? So this is the case when now there's four Thrones people. I think they will all split each other up. Because mm-hmm. again, I mean, how do you really pick? They all had their standout moments. I know where you're going with this. My head is in the same place. Fiona Shaw, baby. Well, that's who my personal choice is. All the odds people think it's Julia Gardner from Ozark, nah. the breakout of the show. Nah. Fiona Shaw. I would pick Fiona Shaw, of course, for Killing Eve, but look out for Julia Gardner. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, moving forward to lead actor in a drama series in a drama um yeah i'm not going jason bateman here i'm not going sterling k brown i'm going with a bit of a surprise one though bob odenkirk i love that saul's fucking awesome I- i'm pretty much just picking what i want to see but it'll probably <laughs> be kit harrington uh, i guess i don't know yeah, bit. sterling's won twice before uh yeah. billy porter i know people will love to see that yeah Nah, I'm I'm going Bob Odenkirk. I think he I think Saul finally gets some love. It's right. It, it deserves it, and Odenkirk, especially the way that he leaves that last season, where you see him slip into slipping slipping Jimmy again. It's yeah. uh, just so masterfully done, and the show's show relies pretty much wholly on his performance. Um and um, uh, Shay or sorry, what's her name? Rhea, Rhea Seahorn. Um, yeah, so it was not nominated still. still oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are you picking for this? I'm having a hard time with this one, to be honest. I mean, uh, Owen Kirk would be my choice. I saw a lot of people saying Bateman would win. Uh, nah. He has been nominated a lot the past few years for Ozark, but. Oh, this Ozark. You, you think Billy Porter could win? Kind of. Uh, I could. Work choice? I could see I it. See, I, I would be I pumped. Don't see it winning. I really don't. And Sterling's won twice before. Um, I feel like This Is Us has kind of waned as a critical show. Not that that has mattered in the past for the Emmys. Look no further than Modern Family. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go, I'll go Billy Porter. I, I just don't have a good read on this one, to be honest. Yeah. It's, it's a tough category for sure. Um, lead actress in a drama series. I guess, uh, look, just looking here, does anyone pop off the list at you? Yeah. It should be Jody Comer, mm-hmm. but I think it'll be Sandra Oh instead. Sandra Oh wasn't yeah. even nominated last year. Or no, she, sorry, she didn't win last year, and Comer wasn't even nominated. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like a appreciation for all Sandra Oh has done for TV, not just Killing Eve Season 2, which was not our favorite season of the show, just put it that way. Uh, yeah. But also, like, I don't see Viola coming back to win for the show at this point. Where do I see Amelia Clark pulling through either? So, 
I think it's just you pick between the Killing Eve actor actresses. You're not and going Robin like, Wright? Yeah, yeah, Robin Wright. I think Netflix has spent like a one dollar <laughs> campaign for the last <laughs> of cards. Uh, President Under President Underwood, uh, mm-hmm. Madame Underwood. Actually, I read the I'm, I'm going to say Amelia Clark. Uh, <laughs> well, was it intriguing? No, nah, it sounded really dumb. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm actually going to say Amelia Clark. Um, she she carries a lot of the season. Uh, her turn. One of her better seasons. Yeah, for sure. And her turn is uh, a huge moment, and not only, I think, for uh, the show, but just TV in general. It's going to be a moment people are going to remember and talk about. Now, how they talk about the execution leading up to that moment might be different, but I think the performance in general is good. So I'm going to say Amelia Clark gets the win here, um, which would actually be really interesting because then you'd be talking drama series, Game of Thrones series three of four if my predictions are correct so probably not going to happen but throwing throwing the guesses out there (laughs) when we wrap up drama series what's taking it home dave game of thrones is winning like case closed (laughs) the final season game of thrones it's the yeah record for the most nominated uh season of a show in emmy's history um your thoughts on the season as a whole critically honoring game of thrones one last time for grabbing 45 million people each week unlike anything else deserves uh deserves love so for sure and i think the only show you could really make a case for perhaps would be secession season one but i don't expect secession to win much uh else leading up to this because it's kind of under nominated so Mm -hmm. it just seems unrealistic therefore thrones uh in a walk honestly yeah man uh, i just hear the secession music playing uh <laughs> as as it puts to a stunned uh db uh benny Wa- benny off and weiss in, in the crowd just can't <laughs> believe it and greg greg the egg that ichabod crane motherfucker, motherfucker. holding up <laughs> The Emmy for best drama. Shout out Nick Braun. That's that's my uh, these are my, my my bold predictions, I guess, for the Emmys. I'm Game really excited to watch because I feel like there's a lot here that we like. So we'll see. Game of, Game uh, of Thrones, Thrones probably will win, but it was nominated 32 times this year, 47 previous wins, 161 total nominations. None of the other shows going up against have more than nine nominations this year. So by 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 transitive property it's the overwhelming favorite for best drama series yeah. that's what say about comedy comedy is much closer but yeah i'm excited to watch I think there's a lot of good stuff and you know with veep and thrones at the end of the line and last year it was americans at this point you know there's just room for for, for new blood and we've kind of already seen that with shows like succession and pose getting recognized i think with and bodyguard we're gonna i think we can get even more of that so uh it's kind of like the we're kind of in between eras in a certain sense, you know. Yeah, for sure, and it's it's interesting though because as we're in between eras, there's so much on the horizon that you could see being nominated next year. Yeah. The Morning Show, The Mandalorian, Watchmen, uh, these sort of shows we're so highly anticipating this time next year. We'll probably also be talking about nominations for Rami Malek and Mr. Robot in its final yeah. season. Um, going to be really uh, fun to see how the streaming wars and the money being poured into these streaming services affects these award nominations moving forward. So uh, a lot, lot of fun stuff to be talking about and looking forward to. 